put before us. Thank you, Father. Your grace is sufficient. And you tell us to come boldly to the throne room of grace. Come boldly. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you that you're with us. You said that you would never leave us nor forsake us. And you are with us even until the end. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody? Good, 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 good. good. You're here. Glory to God. God is a good God. He's a good God. He's a good God. Say one more time with me. He's a good God. He is a good God. Amen. God is good. Mercies are new every day. Amen. I love it. One of my favorite scriptures now. Goodness and mercy shall follow us. Amen. He follows us. Glory to God. He's our rear God. He's so cool. Glory to God. Well, let's pray as we spend a few moments in the Word. Father, we thank you today, Lord. This is the day that you have made. We will rejoice. We will be glad in it. Lord, thank you. You're with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. If you would turn to Isaiah 40, we're going to go to a few places. But in Isaiah 40, I'm going to start with verse 28. And I want to, well, let's just read it. Have you, have you not known, have you not heard the everlasting God, the everlasting God? He's the everlasting God. Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. Oh, boy, did that, that just, that really got the religious people mad. Before Abraham was, because they were saying that Abraham's our father, and Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. You're only 30 years old or 30-something years old. And you're <laughs> Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the everlasting God. Amen. The creator of the ends of the earth neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord, who expect, look for, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And on the way here this morning, I, I saw a lady, I guess she was walking her dog. It had no leash on. But the dog, the back legs didn't work. I guess. And so the dog was on, and I've seen programs about it, and the dog was on some contraption that had wheels in the back. And the legs were up, and I, I guess they don't, they don't work, is, is, is my estimation. But that dog was walking with the front paws, or the front legs, with two wheels in the back. Mm -hmm. And the dog was still going, even though those the, the second set of legs didn't work. Right. And I thought about this verse here. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings. They shall run and not be They shall walk and not faint. That dog, because of, of the help that it had, could still walk. Amen. Back in the day, when I was young, that dog would have been put to sleep. It would have been long gone because it, it couldn't function right. But now they have things that can, and I, you know, if I was a dog owner, I don't think I would go through all that, but that's me. But I thought, my goodness, look at that dog. And now the dog, and, and the lady was an older lady, and she's walk, and, and you could tell the dog, she'd walk a little ways, and then she'd kind of stop or slow down and let the dog take a little rest. And, but it says, they'll run and not be, and they shall walk and not faint. He will help you walk 
Amen. where you won't faint Amen. and you'll run and not be weary. You ever run? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you ever walk? Okay, I think everybody walks. <laughs> but running, my goodness, yeah. in the heat, and I, and I like running in the heat. That's me. In the middle of the day, the hottest time of the day, if I can, and it is just like scorching, but I enjoy that. Well, he'll give you strength. You'll mount up with wings as eagles, and you'll run and not be weary, and you will walk and will not faint. Now, go to 1 Peter chapter 1. We've been talking about, that's free. I just saw that dog, and I... God's your strength. God's God will help you. Amen. Yes, amen. Can you imagine if we didn't have God? Do you think at times life can be interesting with God? You know, I've been walking with God for, for a while now. But I don't know what it's like not to have his presence. Right? I mean, he's, he's with us. I cannot imagine what people go through who have no hope, who have no relationship with God. My goodness. If you, if you think about your mindset and the things that you deal with with God, what in the world are people out there dealing with without Him? Wow. That should give you compassion on people that, my goodness. And you think... But, you know, I have I had a, a lady yesterday flip me off. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I wanted to. I wanted to you know, I like <laughs> she was mad because you try to tell people something and they just don't. They they. And so I'll just go somewhere else. Good. Goodbye. Thank you. And as she's walking out, she's walking by the mirror just. Well, you know, we're there to help a person. Mm -hmm. If they don't want to be helped, well, there's right. nothing you can do. Right. God's there to help you. Amen. Let Him help you. Amen. Are you in First Peter? Yeah. Okay, good. Man, we've been talking about <clears throat> thank God for His work, but in First Peter, now we're going to talk a little bit about the armor of God. You know, last night and this morning, I just. Sometimes you just have an impression about something. So you can share it. Okay. First Peter, are you there? Yes. Verse 22, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, <clears throat> not of corruptible seed. We have been born again, not of corruptible seed. Something that's corruptible or something that's corrupt, it can fail. Are you following? Yes. We have not been born of failed seed, Amen. but incorruptible. Do you see that? Are you looking at it? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's imperishable. It cannot perish. Amen. Incorruptible seed through the word of God, which lives and abides for how long? Forever. Forever. Amen. Sometimes we think God's word doesn't work. No, it abides forever. Amen. It will always be there. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Amen. It will outlast the heavens and the earth. Because one day he's going to roll it all up. God's word goes past all that. Are you following me? Yeah. It's still working. Amen. I, God's word works and it's still working. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God, is what? The same yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same. It'll work. It will always work. Say amen. amen. All flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the Word of the Lord endures forever. We go through seasons. They're not as extreme here in Florida, praise the Lord. But you go through seasons when it, when everything dies. Speaking of foliage and, and 
and and if you if you've ever gone up north where it gets cold and that and <clears throat> all the leaves fall off, the trees are barren there and in the in the in the winter, oh my god, it's just it's not like that here. But everything dies. But the seed of the word of God never dies. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God doesn't sleep nor slumber. He doesn't need sleep. I like to sleep sometimes. Sleep is good for you. Now, I don't know in a glorified body if we'll ever sleep. Guess we'll find out. But now you have to sleep. What happens if you don't get enough sleep? You're laughing, right? You don't sleep. Do you not get enough sleep? It catches up. You know, young people, well, I can. No, you hear something, I only sleep five, six hours, not four hours. Mm. Well, you can only do that for a certain amount of time before it will catch up. Because every, when you're asleep, your, your body is growing and reproducing. That's just how God made it. But His Word doesn't sleep. His Word, when you go to sleep at night, God's Word is still working. The Spirit of God is still working. He's still doing things behind the scenes. That's why you can sleep, but the Word's still working. Say amen. amen. Alright, go to Ephesians 6. This is where I wanted to really to get to this morning. Ephesians chapter 6. God is for you. That last song, what is that last song that we sang? I can't get away. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> You're in the position. I was going to say downpour, but I think that's the second. Who's, who's that by? Her name is Melissa. Melissa has flair in the name. It's a nice song. You can't get away from God. Why would you want to get away from Him? People hide like they're hiding from God. <laughs> and even hid. Like God's not going to find them. Right. I mean, you think about that. They hid. Well, they hid because of shame. Like God doesn't know where they're at. And God asked them, "Where are you?" Like, like He didn't know. He, he's wanting them to respond. You know, God, God sees everything. He knows everything. Amen. Ephesians chapter six, verse number ten. Finally, my brother. You know, let me read that out of the New Living. What do I have? Well, I thought I did. I don't have to do this. I'll read it first out of the King James. New King James. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. We saw that in Isaiah 40. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew what? Their strength. So he said, be strong in the Lord. You have to be in Him to be strong. Now, that's not talking about physical strength necessarily. It's talking about being strong in your spirit and really strong in, in the core of who you are. Amen. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. The New Living says, a final word. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in His mighty power. I like that. A final word. <clears throat> He's emphasizing. <clears throat> Excuse me. A final word now. Now listen. If someone says, I'm going to give you a final word. Oh. <laughs> now that gets your attention, right? Oh. A final word. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Now, I'm not going to teach on the whole armor of God, but I, I, I just want to go through this because I really just felt that we needed to. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil or the schemes of the devil. Put on the whole armor of God. Let me, let me just kind of encapsulate what the, the whole armor of God is. The whole armor of God is literally the Lord Jesus Christ, different aspects of Jesus and who He is in our lives and what He's done. 
literally, that's what the armor is. Put on the armor of God. Well, why would you ever take it off? You don't take the armor off. You know, back in, I don't know when that was, in the 80s or 90s, there was teaching on the armor of God, and every morning you put the armor on, and you, you know, you go through all this. You remember, you weren't even alive. You said, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the story, yes, okay. Yeah, they, they, you, you go through this, and, and you put on the armor of God. No, that's, that, if, if you want to do that to help you get an understanding and a picture of that, praise God. Do it. But you have, you have armor to protect you, to help you. Are you following me? Yeah. Armor is heavy. <laughs> Watching the pacifier yesterday. Oh my yeah. goodness. Their first time. Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> I can't get off. But I, well, I have to get off. Just with me. <laughs> because when. I, I, I'll tie it in somehow. <laughs> because when, when, when you have the armor, and you, you start understanding a little bit about God's armor and how it works, well, then you can work it. You know, in, in Vin Diesel, I don't know what his name was in the movie, this this wrestler, wrestling coach, this guy, what a, what a, what a, but he was... He was acting like he's real tough and all this, and he was the wrestling coach and in in, in this boy's face and doing it. Well, they ended up Vin Diesel ended up wrestling this guy, if you want to call it that, <laughs> and just destroyed him to, to say the least. <clears throat> yeah, he's a the guy's a Navy SEAL, and this guy, and so. <laughs> well, but if you look at that compared, man. You have the armor of God. You're you're fighting the good fight of faith against who? An enemy that has been defeated. He's already been defeated. Uh, are, are you following? Me? You're not defeated unless you're defeated in your thinking and in your speaking. You're not defeated. The enemy has been defeated. Jesus defeated him. Took the key of hell, death and hell, took the key, took the authority, and, and he, he has placed that in our hands, given us something tangible. That, I, that's why I, when, when he wrote, when the Spirit of God through Paul wrote about the armor of God, it was something tangible that he could see, that, that Paul was around it, and he could see, and God gave him a revelation. It was tangible, so it could help him go through this and walk this life out. Right. Are you following me? Mm -hmm. All right, good. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. Grappling, that's, that's hand to hand combat, literally, is what he's talking about. But against principalities, against powers, against the rules of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, Take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Take up the whole armor of God. Take it all on. Take it all. Take this revelation on. Put it on. Understand this so that you can continue. Jesus said, if you continue in my word, or if you abide in my word, if you continue in my word, you are what? My disciple indeed, and you will know the truth. And the truth will make you free. It makes you a certain way. We've talked about that. Let me keep reading here. Go back to Ephesians 6. If you'd love. Stand there for having girded your waist with truth. Now, We've been talking about thank God for His Word. And this ties in because I want to I want to look at the belt of truth for a moment. What, what does a belt do? It holds, it holds your pants up. If your pants fall down, if you're walking and your pants fall down, what 
can happen. Well, okay, the embarrassment, yes. But if your pants fall down, you and you're walking, and your pants fall down, you're what's a good chance that you're going to probably Tumble. fall over. Why? Because it's going to tangle up your legs, and you're going to go down, most likely. But the belt, hold your pants up. Say amen. amen. Well, what does the belt of truth do? It holds everything up. Without the belt of truth, the armor that, that, the, that the soldiers had wouldn't work right. Because the belt, that belt or the loin that they had, held it all in place and held it all together. Are you following me? Yep. But what is the belt? It's the truth. We've been talking about the truth. That's what you cannot let go of the truth of God's word. Don't let it go no matter what. No matter what the enemy's saying, no matter what someone says in your life. They might tell you something that's contrary to the word of God, be out of experience. Have you ever had somebody tell you something that and there could be a and they're a believer, but it's contrary to the word that you know? Has that ever happened? Well, because they're basing it on maybe an experience they had. That something may have not worked or whatever, and they're basing... You cannot base the truth of the Word of God on experience. Now, He'll give you experiences. What do you base the truth of the Word of God on? The infallibility of who God is and God's character. Uh, did you hear what I just said? You're, God has given us His Word. God doesn't change. He doesn't lie. And God's character is impeccable. Amen. People's character might go up and down a little bit. God's character doesn't change. He's the same. That's why the Scriptures say Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change. Thank God he doesn't change. God's not emotional driven. My goodness. He would have. Yeah, amen. Mm-hmm. All right, let's keep reading. Stand there for having girded your waist with truth. Let me, let me read you something. The loin belt of truth, and, and that's all we're probably just going to talk about this. The loin belt of truth was what kept all the other pieces of the armor of God together. The Roman shield was attached to the loin belt. Wow. Did you hear that? The soldier's shield was attached to the belt. Now, a time when they needed to use it, if... And that, and I get, now I got a picture of that movie that we saw, The Pacifier. He, 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 and this is near the beginning. He, he straps on, he's got like a backpack. <laughs> and look, you know, you know, like an arm. And he's got baby bottles. He's got all kinds of stuff wrapped around this thing. Everything that he thinks he's going to need in that backpack. He's got diapers. He's got all kinds of juice boxes, he's, he's got all this wrapped around he's like his loin belt and he's carrying it all right. so if he needs it, he can pull it out like Batman, remember Batman with his little belt my god, he'd pull all kinds of gadgets and went crazy and I'm talking about the old Batman show that was kind of but he would pull out he had everything in that thing, that little belt boy, he so what? Well, the loin, the, that belt of truth, the belt, it has everything. Yeah. But the 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 shield, the belt was also the place where the sword rested. Yeah. The loin belt also held the breastplate in place, especially during battle. All right. So it's a holding everything together. God, the, God's word holds everything together. Amen. You let go an area of your life, and things start falling in that area, and, and it'll affect other areas if you're not careful. Say amen. Amen. Okay, um, you're, you're, at least you're here. Mm-hmm. But the, the shield rests now. The sword. 
What was the sword? The sword was the offensive weapon, but the sword is the sword of the Spirit. The Word of God. What was the shield for? Called the shield of faith. Paul's looking at the shield. God says, you know what? It's the shield of faith. It'll quench every fiery dart of the wicked. It'll, it'll snuff out something that the enemy fires at you. It'll snuff it out if it hits that shield of faith. But that shield of faith it is made of leather. Several layers of leather. And then they would soak the leather. They would soak it. So when they went out to battle, they would shoot. You know, it says the fire dart, but they would shoot. Arrows that were on fire. And it hit the shield and it would snuff it out. That's where you get all that. Well, but see, that's all because of the belt. If the soldier had to carry all that, all the stuff in his hands all the time, he'd get tired. Are, are you following me? Right. Let's keep reading. Stand, therefore, having girded your waist with truth. I'm just going to read the whole thing right now. Mm-hmm. Having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace, Above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The helmet protects your head. Baseball players wear helmets. They can get hit in the head with a fastball and it still can cause problems. They start wearing helmets... I think it was after 1920 when a guy named, his last name was Chapman, got hit in the head and it killed him. So the helmet's protecting your head. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. The belt of truth held the shield of faith, which is the Word of God. It's all the same. Amen. Held it together. Go to Psalm 91. You know, nowadays when you walk outside, you have to believe God for His protection. <laughs> no matter where you go. Nowadays, it doesn't matter. In the natural, in the natural. There may not really be any place that's safe because there's crazy people doing things everywhere. But when you're with God, He can make wherever you go safe. Why? Because He's with you and you're with Him. Are are you following me? You can't leave your house, oh my God, what? There's a crazy you'd never leave your house. <laughs> Are you in Psalm 91? Yes. Verse 4. He shall cover you with his feathers. You want to be covered with feathers? And under his wings you shall take refuge. God doesn't have wings, but it's it. It's it. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Do you see that? You know what a buckler is? It's a small shield. The truth shall be your shield and and the small shield. So, it's a double shield. Literally, there's two shields. 
You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. The things that the enemy tries to lie to you about, they won't come near you. Amen. See, we, we, we read that, okay, in the net. Man, that he, no, also, when the enemy, with, with his lies, it won't come near you. Amen. Why? You're walking with God. His truth is your shield and buckler. Amen. He said, a thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. It's not going to come near you. Don't let it come near you. Amen. Don't take it. Don't agree with it. Amen. No. Say no. <laughs> mm-hmm. Or, uh-uh. Or, go to Joshua 1. Boy, as you go there, in 1 Timothy 6, verse 12, out of the message, it says, run hard and fast in the faith. Run hard and fast. I find myself running now. I'm not running real hard. I don't run real fast. And it's almost, uh, I thought about the other day when I was running, man, this is almost an embarrassment. Man, I used to I used to run two to three times faster. Because I time it, and I'm like, my God, this is. But then I think, at least I'm moving. I'm going. I'm. I'm run hard and fast in the faith. Seize the eternal life, the life you were called to, the life you so fervently embraced in the presence of so many witnesses. The New Living says, "Fight the good fight." For what we believe. Hold tightly to the eternal life that God has given you, which you have confessed so well before many witnesses. Hold fast to it. Joshua 1, are you there? Yes. Okay, good. Joshua 1 8. Thank God for his word. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. But you shall meditate in it day and night. Don't let it depart from your mouth. He's not saying, don't speak it. No, don't let it go. Meaning, you're you're letting something else go. You're not letting God's word go. You're keeping it in your mouth. Bless God. Meditate day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written. For then you'll make your way prosper. And then you will have good success. God has success written for you. Go to Luke chapter 8. Just a couple more verses we'll quote. Luke chapter 8. The seed is the word, verse 11. Remember the incorruptible seed that we talked about at the beginning? Verse 15. But the ones that fell on the good ground. What? The seed. The incorruptible seed falls on good ground. Your heart is good ground. You have to believe your heart is good ground. Amen. It falls on good ground are those who having heard the word with a noble and good heart keep it. Heard it with a noble and good heart. You hear it and you keep it. What does that mean? You don't let go of it. Amen. You know, back, when was that? A couple of weeks ago, uh, we had new equipment for our internet. And, and so we had, I had the, the panels in the closet. Let me sure. The panels in the closet, that means I had to take part of the closet apart. The, um, the shelving. Oh, Lord. And so, that means I had to take all my clothes down. Take the shelving apart to get to this panel, which is quite amazing how they 
why they would put it there, but that's... Mm -hmm. But when I got, went through it, I got rid of a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. a bunch of clothes in the process. But the ones that I really wanted, I kept. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who haven't heard the word, with a noble and good heart, keep it. You keep the word. You keep what you want. Isn't that true? You don't. How many keep what they don't want? Doesn't even make sense. I'm going to keep. I don't want this, so I'm going to keep it. I want this, so I'm going to get rid of it. That doesn't make any sense. Right? Aiden's like, huh? <laughs> you keep. He said, hear the word and keep it. Amen. Don't give it away. Don't let go of it. What will happen? They'll bear fruit. With patience or with endurance. They'll bear fruit. That fruit will bear. The seed will spring up and grow. Remember, he says in, in Mark 4, he doesn't even know how. It'll grow. Because it's made to grow. Amen. God's word is made to grow. Hallelujah. It's made to produce. It's made to go on and on and carry on. That's why you put on that armor. Bless you. That armor was made for you to go forward. Amen. Them Roman soldiers, that, well, they don't fight like that anymore. They would walk on the line, roll, line and just walk. And destroy whatever in their pack. Mm -hmm. well, you don't fight like that. That's that's, but that's how it was fought. When we fought in the Revolutionary War, it it was like urban warfare. They, we fought a different way, and we won. Are you following? Me? Well, because the soldiers were taught, man, you just march. Well, that, but if you're coming from all different directions and, and you're hiding and Man, you can pick you can pick them off. Mm -hmm. But with God, you go forward, you don't stop. That's right. Step by step. Step by step. Just like that dog that I was talking about this morning. That dog moving. <laughs> now, I don't know who invented that thing. Oh my goodness. Gives that animal a way to move. Amen. God gave us a way to move. Amen. And as we're moving, He gave us some material, if I can say it like that, to keep on so that you can win the battle. But the good thing about it, if, if you read the scripture, the battle is the Lord's. Mm -hmm. And he fights for you. Amen. He'll fight. Uh, he's walking with you. He gives you that armor so that you can see yourself a certain way. Breastplate of righteousness. Mm -hmm. Helmet of salvation. <laughs> protects your heart. Protects your mind. Mm -hmm. Your heart and mind protected in Christ Jesus. Amen. Your hearts are protected. Your mind, man, that's the, the battles in the mind. When you, when you have these things protecting you, you will go forward and win. Are you following me? Yes, amen. Amen. Let me give you one more prescription. That's it. That is it. Go to second... Go to Second Timothy. Let's go ahead. I was going to go there, but let's go. Second Timothy three. Last seven verses. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Well, man wrote that. Sure they did. But the inspiration is infallible because the inspiration is coming from God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. 
and is profitable for what? Doctrine. For reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, or the person of God, the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You're thoroughly equipped. Amen. If you're building a house and don't have the right equipment, it's not going to work. Are you following me? Yeah. But if you have the right equipment, it's, it's like, you know, the new new housing developments. If you ever see the new housing what do they do? They lay all the piping. They lay all the sewage. They lay all those things first. There, there's things that have to be done first in that new neighborhood before the homes even go up. But you have to have the right equipment to dig and, the, and, the, and the place all these pipes and sewage in that underground are you following me? You have to have the right equipment. You don't see men out there with shovels. <laughs> you could. My God, you know how long that's going to take? No, so they have big old bulldozers. They have big old shovel things. I don't know even what you call them. What? And they're digging the earth. They have the equipment. Are, are you following? Amen. Thoroughly equipped. You have the. You're thoroughly. You have the right equipment. God gave you equipment. Praise the Lord. You know, and when a banner comes to the plate, they have a certain size bat. certain size, certain weight to it. You ever see the little mini bats? They're like souvenir bats. They're like this big. Have you ever seen a batter go up to the plate? <laughs> One, they're tiny. Can you imagine a 95 mile an hour fastball hitting that bat? It's going to just... Blow it up. <laughs> That's a Randy Johnson back I think in the nineties. And and you can see it on the video. He's throwing a fastball. And a bird happens to fly by. The bird is That bird disintegrated. I, I mean disintegrated. Just <laughs> It, it disintegrated, right? I mean, if you ever saw it, it's just like, what happened? Just a bunch of yeah, some, yeah, some feathers and just, it was just like, boom, and burn. Well, that's what would happen with that little bat. No, oh, but if you had, you, where, where do I get these pictures? My God, I don't know. Google that sometime, it's just pretty neat. If you want to YouTube. But, but you know what? It, you're equipped. You have the right equipment. For every good work. God's got to work for you. He's got people for you to read. People for you to lay hands on. People for you to, to pray. You're fully equipped for every good work. You have the right equipment. You have the armor. We, we didn't really talk about it much, but I want to talk about the truth, the work. You can do all things through Christ. It didn't say through Jesus. Wasn't Jesus the Christ? Through Christ. The reason why they used Christ through the anointing, one of his anointing, his, the anointing, the, 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 the power source. The anointing of the Holy Spirit. You can do it. God's for you. If God be for you, who can be against you? A lot of people can be against you. Remember, no weapon formed against you will prosper. No weapon formed against you. It, weapons can be formed against you. But the scripture says, 
no weapon formed against you will what? That's good. It won't prosper. Great. Yeah. That's great. Father, thank you today, Lord. This is your day. This is the day you have made. Every day is your day, Lord, because this is the day you, you've made every day. We will rejoice and be glad and thank you, Father, for the armor. We thank you, Father, for the equipment you gave us. Lord, help us. You're walking with us. Lord, thank you for who you are in our lives. Say this with me. I continue in the word. I, in the word. I, am, the indeed. I am the Lord's disciple indeed. I am the Lord's disciple indeed. I know the truth. I know the truth. The truth makes me free. Makes me free. In every area of my life. In every area I am prosperous. I, am prosperous. I have good success. I, have good success. I, am healed. I am healed. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I can do all things, I can do all things through, Christ, through Christ who strengthens me. And I will rejoice in today. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, this morning. We thank you for your grace. We thank you, Father, for who you are in our lives. Lord, that you're helping us all the time. You're all the while at work in us to do of your good pleasure and delight. And Father, as we receive the tithes and offerings, Lord, I thank you that this seed is blessed. Lord, thank you that we can be given. And Lord, that we can receive what your word promises. Because we sow in faith. And we sow because of the love of God that's in our heart. Because you've placed that in our heart. And so, Father, thank you for 30, 60, 100 fold return in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. If you need an envelope.